Hello, my name is Dr. Carlo Odin. I am a board certified emergency physician and in this patient education video, I will be talking about five tips to keep your atrial fibrillation in check. When you are diagnosed with atrial fibrillation, you might think that life as you know it is over. Now, you will have to watch for triggers and be prepared to handle sudden symptoms and generally keep a lower profile than other heart healthy people. In reality, there's plenty that you can do to keep living life the way you want or make it even happier, healthier and more rewarding existence despite having atrial fibrillation. It's true that heart palpitations, chest discomfort and anxiety are no fun to live with. But although it can be difficult to completely eradicate atrial fibrillation symptoms, you can diminish them in their severity and frequency by making some clear and straightforward lifestyle changes. If you want to take your health seriously, consider these approaches to a stronger cardiovascular system. Tip number one, make exercise a part of your life. You've heard it before. But it can't be said often enough. If you want to improve your energy, strengthen your heart, and increase your longevity, you need to make exercise a part of your everyday routine. Of course, living with a feed means minding your limits, so you'll need to make moderate your workout routine with the help of sound medical advice from your doctor or healthcare provider and a keen focus on your body signals of distress. Strenuous exercise can make an irregular heartbeat worse, but moderate exercise can bring long-term benefits like weight loss and lower blood pressure, and that can help you ward off heart failure, which is a major risk when you have atrial fibrillation. Consider a routine that balances regular, moderate aerobic exercise with stretching and strengthening activities like yoga. Tip number two, minimize stress as much as possible. Not only is stress a common trigger of atrial fibrillation, it appears to affect the severity of your symptoms as well. Psychological stress, which can manifest in forms like anxiety and depression, has prompted patients to visit their doctor more often with atrial fibrillation complaints. Likewise, if you're prone to anxiety or high stress states, even moderate AFib symptoms could feed the cycle. Stress is personal and unique. Your stress relief program should be as well. The first step is to be more observant, to learn what brings on stress, where it tends to happen, and why you have such a difficult time to control it. Then explore your options. From innovative workouts to face-to-face -face therapy sessions, there are plenty of stress-relieving resources at your fingertips and no reason to wait any longer to try some of them. Tip number three, reduce your salt intake. High sodium lifestyles are the norm in North America and they're slowly chipping away at our health. It's true you need salt to live, but when you take it too much, more than 1,500 milligrams a day, your body's mineral balance is thrown off, your blood pressure goes up, your heart rhythm can suffer. Not a good combination for anyone, especially people with atrial fibrillation. One simple first step is to decrease the amount of sodium you eat, which means drastically reducing frozen, processed, or takeaway meals. Pay close attention to labels, some food have a surprising amount of sodium. And get used to cooking with flavorful herbs and spices rather than salt. You may also want to pay more attention to your minerals. Electrolyte imbalance can feed atrial fibrillation, so it might be time to take up your magnesium and potassium to counter the sodium that you're taking in. Tip number four. Watch out for stimulants like caffeine and alcohol. Stimulants can feel great when you're consuming them, but your heart often bears the health burden. If you're prone to heart rhythm irregularities, 
you're probably even more vulnerable to an adverse reaction to stimulants like caffeine, alcohol, and other drugs. Remember that stimulants can hide in products that seem harmless. Coffee and cola are prime caffeine sources, but caffeine can also be found in pain relievers and chocolate treats. Energy drinks are some of the worst offenders. They're loaded with stimulant compounds. So even if they're labeled caffeine-free, you should avoid them altogether. Alcohol is one of the most common stimulants and it has a direct impact on heart health. Even a couple of drinks can raise your blood pressure and increase the risk of palpitations, so moderation is key. Wondering what moderation looks like for atrial fibrillation sufferers? It can come down to personal physiology. So listen to your body and talk with your doctor about that. Tip number five. Try your best to not get sick, like infections like flu or viral syndromes. Getting sick is never comfortable, but it can be dangerous when you live with atrial fibrillation. The flu is particularly threatening. Symptoms like high fever can lead to dehydration, and respiratory problems causing hypoxemia, low oxygen, can stress your cardiovascular system. Your best defense against the flu are frequent hand washing and the annual flu shot. Worried that this year's vaccine won't offer too much protection? It's still worth getting because even if you were to contract the flu, the symptoms could be much more manageable if you got the vaccine. And that can make a big difference when those symptoms are known to interfere with your heart disorder. Implement these five tips by establishing a routine. How long does it take to form a habit? A lot depends on how difficult it is to adopt and how quickly you can weave it into your daily routine. Some research suggests that it takes a little over two months for a new behavior to become permanent, which means you will have to stay focused on your lifestyle changes for a while, especially when it comes to the tips like exercise and eating well. It's easy to slide into old patterns, especially when life gets hectic. You may fare better with some support like working out with a group or joining conversation in online forums to share challenges and tips on keeping or kicking a specific habit. The idea is to make it as easy as possible on yourself to adopt positive, lasting changes for the good of your heart. Hey, my name is Dr. Carlo Ojed, emergency physician, and I want to thank you for watching this video. I hope it was useful to you and don't forget to like and comment and join me on other patient education videos just like this one. We'll see you on the next video. Bye bye. If you enjoyed this video you just watched, please click the like button. Then please leave a comment and join the conversation. Ask me questions, I will try to post an answer. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in our next video.